on, on this Thursday. Good morning. This is John DePietro in the WPRO Morning News in studio. Providence Mayor David Cicilline. Mr. Mayor, there are a number of different topics, but I just want to come back to the Soprano business. Uh, by all accounts, I mean, unless I'm missing something, he seemed to be a uh, reliable, valued employee until he ran into this whole mess regarding the check and your brother. He, 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 then from where you sit, what happened to Robert Soprano where now he's, he's bringing this lawsuit? John, John, the question that you raised right before the break also about the, the findings of the KPMG relate directly to the, to the termination of issue here. And I want to just really reinforce that what KPMG found lacking in the, in the tax assessor's office, tax collector's office rather, these were not extraordinary things that uh, no department has in response to your earlier question. These were very standard operating procedures that are in place and should be in place in every tax office in any municipality. They were things, and again, that is online for people to read, but they were, they identified a lack of formal policies. They uh, identified as a lack of an ability to segregate duties, a lack of automation, that payments to the city were not properly secured, that there was no visual security system, there was a lack of same-day teller cash balancing, that residents were exposed to incorrect interest billing, lack of process for granting employee access to data, that payment plans were based on subjective judgments, there was a lack of oversight of collection agencies, a lack of compatibility with the tax assessor's office. There was a lack of policies from year to year determining standards for accounts that went into collection, so, and, and more. So these are not extraordinary things that they were setting a standard that any, nobody could meet. These are standard practices in tax collector's offices which were not present in this office. Those were serious deficiencies, and when the new city finance director came on board, he quickly came to the conclusion that there were deficiencies in that office. A period of time went on in which the tax collector, Mr. Soprano, was coached and um, encouraged to implement a series of things and really given a choice, either bring this office up to standard and implement these things, or we're going to have to make de a determination that you need to either leave this position and maybe you'll be transferred to another position within city government what or resign. What was his reluctance to bring the city, the uh, office, up to standards? I, I don't know what his reluctance was, but they didn't bring him up to standard. And and the finance director met with him again. And who was that? Who uh, was Bruce he? Miller. Uh, I met with him again and said, uh, these, these practices have not been adopted. These changes have not been made. And this was an assessment that the new director of administration and the new director of finance came to very quickly when they came on board. There was an effort again to, uh, to pr get these things done, to have Mr. Soprano leave that work. It did not happen. And at that point, Bruce Miller communicated to Mr. Soprano that it was time for him to leave this position, that new leadership was required in that office, and gave him several options about uh, either uh, retiring, um, seeking assignment in another city department, and uh, gave him an opportunity to think about that. Mr. Soprano said, I'd like to think about it. Um, I'm, you know, was considering leaving the position when Bruce Miller communicates to him, look, this is the day I need your letter of resignation. It was several days later that he, he then discloses his involvement in a check involving my brother. So the determination had already been made by the director of finance that Mr. Soprano was not doing the job and should be removed from that position. That was communicated to Mr. Soprano in an email, and it was only after that uh, that he reveals uh, I, this. I, I want to go to um, on the hotline is our media partner, NBC10, and Bill Rapley, who is the NBC10 political reporter. Good morning, Bill. Bill? Good, Good morning, morning, Bill. You're on with uh, Mayor Cicilline. We hadn't uh, planned on that, but I understand you either had a question for him. Good morning, Bill. Well, we're live on the radio. We're live on the radio. Okay, I only have a minute, though, and I want to be very clear to the mayor. This was not a set thing. Bill, you're just calling in on your own fruition, not of a uh, political courtesy of being our media partner. I'm allowing you very quickly with the mayor. No, no, I, well, I didn't say, hear that. I no. heard political enemies. Yeah, I, I think there's no question that. No, no, of course. Bill, look, I think if you look at the reporting that was done yesterday, 
about the filing of this lawsuit. You look at the amount, the absurd claims made in this lawsuit, the amount of the lawsuit. The, the, let me finish. Look, Bill, I don't think there is any question that if you look at the circumstances of the filing of this lawsuit, the identity of the lawyer involved, the former chief of staff to my predecessor, what they did after the filing of the lawsuit, they went back to, a, to an establishment owned by Artie Kaloyan with my predecessor, with Mr. Spano to field media calls. I don't think it, there's any question that there is an effort by political enemies of mine to advance this totally false claim as an effort to try to stop the work that we've done. Look, we have in the last six years, you know, done an enormous amount of work to change the culture of this city, to bring integrity back to Providence, to, uh, you know, s abolish the practices like people paying to be on a toll list, not allowing city employees to contribute to my campaign, important reforms to bring honesty and transparency and integrity to city government. And there is no question that there are lots of people who benefited and profited very directly from the old system in this city and they don't want us to continue the progress that we've made. I, don't, I think the viewers and listeners can draw their own conclusions as to whether or not that cast of characters, which are political enemies of mine in this administration, are playing some role in this. That's all. That's my point. We're going to be back with Mayor David Cicilline right now from the Gem Plumbing On-Time Traffic Center. He was just